So at this point, we already have a pretty solid foundation to the game, but there's still more things we could add in here. For instance, we could add in a particle effect when our nodes here vanish because they've been harvested. We could have an explosion of pixels um, to come out when our nodes are removed from the scene. So let's create a pixel effect next. I'm going to go to scene, new scene, and uh, let's look for other node. We want particles. So we can use either CPU or GPU particles. Personally, I don't know the ins and outs about how these exactly compare, but I think on the documentation, they do mention that when you have a ton of particles, the GPU particle system um, can outperform the CPU particles. But more or less, they have about the same properties you can set up in the inspector. I think GPU particles has subparticle rendering, but I'm not sure that CPU particles does. Anyway, we'll just go with GPU particles. I don't see a good reason not to. So uh, we'll use that for our particle system. We'll rename this particle system to be something like depleted resources explosion, explosion. Okay, if we hover over this little warning, we'll see that we need a material to process the particles is not as signed. So basically we need a texture. What are we going to actually show for our particles um, as the effect? So if we want to keep it simple, we can just click here and do, uh, I think new canvas texture was what I was trying to go with. Yep, and that just gives us like this little square. If you want to change the color of a canvas texture particle, you can go down to visibility and self-modulate to change this color. If you do modulate, it changes the color of all child nodes as well but we could change the color here to something else like red or blue if we wanted to, but I think just white pixels will do um, just fine for right now. Okay, so if we hover over the warning, you'll see that um, in order for the GPU particles to do anything, we need to have a process material, which we can assign over an inspector process material. So here we want new particle process material. When we do that, you'll start seeing um, the particle system actually starts to do things. If you want to edit the properties, just click on that and you'll get a whole bunch we can change. So one we're going to turn off is the gravity. So if we click on gravity, we can change the Y gravity to zero. And now that's going to stop the movement. So then we need to figure out from our origin point, how do we want this particle effect to look? Where do we want the particles to come out? Should it just be an explosion and like a ring that goes all the way around? Should the particles come down in an arc? So there's many ways you can set that up. So if you want to control where your particles spawn from, you can click on shape and change it to something like a sphere or a ring or a box. If you want the particles to randomly spawn away from the center point, but more inside of another shape like a sphere, a box would, of course, just be like a rectangle and a ring would be like a sphere again, but with the center part cut out. So you could think of that like a donut. But for right now, I'm going to leave it as point. Uh, we'll just see if we can have all of the particles start from the center and then go out in the directions we need to. So that means we're going to need to set the velocity. We can start with initial velocity. Let's try setting it to something like 50 velocity min, 50 velocity max. Now you can see it's coming out of here in like a 45 degree arc. That's because if we look at direction, the spread is 45. So if we wanted this to be a full circle in the direction of the velocity, then we can change the spread to 360 because uh, a circle has 360 degrees. So now it's coming out in all directions. Uh, but right now, uh, you can also see that it is coming as a stream, but you might prefer for this to be more of like a burst effect. If we're dealing with an explosion, that would more be like all the particles coming out at once. So if we want all of the particles to come out at once, uh, then we need to find the, I think it's called explosiveness. So I'll filter properties because I'm actually not sure where that is. So I'll type up here explosiveness so that's in time, I guess. And we'll take the explosiveness and let's set that to one. So now you can see that everything comes out at once. So more of an explosion. And we can take the amount and increase that as well. So if we do something like 20, then we're going to get a lot more particles coming out. Let's try 30 even. Um, it really won't matter if we're just emitting one pixel particles like this. Uh, I doubt any machine can't handle that. So it's not very complex or anything. So if you wanted, you could probably do something like 3000 and get away with it. So now we have almost like a complete ring being emitted, which is actually quite cool, honestly. Uh, maybe a little bit too overkill for what we're dealing with. Let's try 300 and maybe 150, because I do want there to be some gaps here. And I don't actually want these uh, particles to come out as far as well. So rather than slowing the velocity, let's decrease the lifespan of these particles. I'll come down here to time section. I guess that's where explosiveness was. And let's change the lifespan to 0.25. I 
Okay, that's a little too short. Let's do 0 0.5 instead. Okay, so the only way we can really test this for sure to know how it's going to look would be to put it inside of our actual scene. So let's control S. So I'll create a folder for uh, particle effects and the like here. I'll just call it effects and then save it in, in there. Now let's go to the game level scene and I'll take the particle effect from the effects folder and let's just drag it in here to where we have our node. And this will be roughly how the particle effect compares to the size of the node. I think the particles could stand to be a little bit bigger than that. Uh, let's hit play and uh, test to make sure that that's how it looks in game as well. All right. And I'm going to take this effect and jump into it. So let's um, so let's first off increase the size of these particles. So let's go to scale and for scale, maybe we do two and two. And then let's shrink the number of particles to 50. And I maybe I want to lower the velocity a little bit as well. Or uh, rather, we can keep the initial velocity as 50, but let's actually slow that down over time. So I think with damping, that's might be what you need. Uh, let's try one and one here. Okay, it does seem to kind of do it. Let's try changing it to 10, 10, 30, 30. Okay, yeah, and that definitely does seem to be slowing the particles over time. So 50, 50. Okay, I think I'm liking that a lot more. So we have particles that start off fast and they get slower over time. We can also make it so that these particles fade out at the end rather than just um, disappearing from view all together at once. So uh, for that, we would need to go to color and then we can make a, I think it's a color ramp we want here. So let's do a new gradient texture 1D and this will be the color over time. So if we click here, we can edit the gradient. Uh, we want to start with white, of course. So I'll change that initial color to white. And let's click here to add another point for our gradient. So this will be about the time during our timeline duration where we start to fade out the color. And then this final one, we'll double click on it and let's lower the alpha to zero. Okay, so now what happens is at the end, you can see that our particles actually fade for a second before they just disappear from view. So it should be a little bit of a smoother transition out. And we can test it by saving and hitting play, taking a look at our game scene. And that will be roughly how our particles look after uh, we harvest a node. Of course, we're only gonna have it emit once and we only want it to happen once the node is destroyed, but we're getting pretty close. Let's take the scale and I'll increase the size to three here for the particles. Oh, let's make it a let's make it a range actually between two and three. So I have a little bit of variation between our particle sizes there. And let's take the amount down to 40. Okay, just want it to look a little bit chunkier, a little bit more pixel art. And lastly, we can turn off emitting. So what we'll actually do is we'll spawn our particle effect. We'll emit the particles one time as a burst, and then we will basically remove the node once all the particles are gone. So to automatically remove our particle system from the scene, I'll right click add a child node. Let's look for timer. Uh, we'll say 0 0.5 seconds to remove it. And then let's attach a script to our depleted resources explosion. So I'll create this new script here. And then we're going to need a callback from the timer. So the timer, go to node, click on the signal timeout, connect it to the depleted resources explosion. And then on timeout, we're going to queue free on the particle system. So we just need to make sure that um, the duration for our particles being there is less than the timeout for the timer so that the particles can all finish their simulation. But remember, we set the time to 0 0.5 seconds. So after 0 0.5 seconds, uh, the effect should be able to remove itself without any problems. If you want, you can make it a little longer just as a just in case and, and do something like 0 0.55, give it a little extra time. Let's also turn on one shot and auto start. So this will happen automatically. Okay, and now we just need to create our depleted resources explosion at the location where our resource node is removing itself and then emit the particles uh, when that uh, event occurs. So let's go to resource node pine. Let's open up the script here and we're gonna have an export var for the particle effect we want to spawn after the node is depleted. So we can do something like uh, under pickup type, let's say at export var depleted effect, which will be a type of GPU particles 2D and we'll save that. Okay, so now in the inspector, we can assign our effect. So I'll just drag and drop it. Depleted resources explosion.tscn into the slot here. Oh, 
I messed up. Because it's not in the level yet, it's actually a packed scene. You have to instantiate the packed scene, and then it's a um, GPU particles effect. Okay. So in the inspector, we drag the packed scene into the slot, and then we instantiate a copy of that packed scene. So then we go down here to where we queue free. Uh, before we queue free, we want to spawn particle effect before removing the node. And then we'll create the effect and add it to the level parent. So let's create a local var here. So I'll call it effect instance, which will be a type of GPU particles 2D. And we're going to create that by taking the depleted effect and instantiating that. Okay, after we instantiate it, we add the location of it to be the location of our resource node. And so let me take a look at the uh, effect scene. Does this have a position we can set a transform? Yeah, okay, so transform position, we should be able to set that. So in our resource node script, once again, effect instance dot, let's see, I think we could just say dot position. I'm not sure why it doesn't show up there as an option. But anyway, uh, this will be equal to the position of this node, but we add it as a child to the level parent. So level parent dot add child effect instance. And this means we create a copy of the effect, we position it at the node, we make it parented under the level so that when we remove this depleted node, it doesn't remove the uh, particle effect. Also, we want the particle effect to last after the node has been removed. And then we just need to emit some particles on the uh, effect instance. So effect instance dot emit. I'm not sure why um, the functions here aren't showing up as an option. But just to be sure about the function names, we can search help up here and do GPU, GPU particles 2D. Come down here and look at the functions. I guess GPU particles doesn't actually have an emit function. Uh, not a problem. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure that by default it is enabled, and then we'll just make sure the emission only happens once during that uh, 0.55 seconds. So maybe we have the loop be one second, but the particle system removes itself after 0.55 seconds, so it'll only ever emit once anyway. So let's open up the depleted resource node scene, um, and we'll toggle emitting on. And oh, actually, uh, the one shot here, that's, that's what we want. So we just do a one shot, and when emitting is done, then it's just gonna turn itself off automatically. So that's actually pretty much perfect for what we need there. All right, so that might actually be everything we need, just these three lines of code. Uh, let's make sure that the rock also has it. So it will filter files, resource node, resource underscore node, and we'll change rock tall to use that same effect. So we can load a effect from our effects folder and we'll do depleted resources explosion. Okay, so now they both have that same effect. Let's test it. Um, let's go to 2D level and make sure that the test depleted resources explosion is removed from the scene. That shouldn't be there by default. It's only gonna happen after uh, one of our resource nodes finishes and then we'll have the explosion. So let's hit play. We'll go harvest this rock. One, two, three, four, five. We didn't actually get the emission to occur. Okay, so... We'll have to figure out why that is. Let's try editing uh, the depleted scene first and see if anything is going on here. So emitting is actually off by default now. So it, maybe actually we just need to turn emitting on since the one shot occurs and stops in the editor, I guess. So script view and we're going down and looking for a resource node. And then for the instance, the effect instance, Effect instance, we're going to take emitting and turn that to true. So let's see. Um, emitting equals true. Okay, let's try that. I'll turn off this breakpoint. We'll hit play. We go here and harvest the node. One, two, three, four, five. And we get our explosion. Sweet. So let's make sure that is also working with the tree. One, two, three, four, five. And we get our explosion. So now we can just basically tweak our effect to what we need it to do. But um, our particle system is uh, basically working there, which is pretty cool. So a couple things I might change, increasing the size of the scale. So let's try four and five. And let's also increase the initial velocity a bit more to 60, 60. And I'll test it one more time. 
let's go harvest a node. One, two, three, four, five. And there's our explosion. So that'll do pretty good for right now.